Software Defined Networking, SDN. If not the most popular term in today's IT world. And if you meet any service provider, they will start talking about their SDN solution and how great it is. Now, it is great. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm all for SDN. However, there are many flavors of SDN. There are many implementations. There are multiple protocols. And in fact, there are multiple religions in SDN. So just to talk about SDN generically is, is, is not good. So I will try to bring you the fundamentals and the main building blocks of SDN, what it is really all about. In essence, it is all about automation. How can I automate my IT stack for my transmission media all the way up to my uh, data centers and my applications? And how can I, in a very fast and efficient way, provision the service for a customer? How can I assure the service and how can I maintain it? And that's where scalability is another factor that comes into the picture. That's what we'll be talking about in a few moments. Now, don't think all this is brand new. Uh, SDN is leveraging your existing network resources and assets, your data center assets and resources. Of course, all of these assets, routers, switches, servers, they all have to be SDN enabled for one or another protocol. But if they are, then you can integrate them in an SDN environment. And again, SDN is all about automation through controllers, orchestration, and self-serving portals. The first big topic in SDN is provisioning or service fulfillment. How do you create a service for a customer throughout the stack? And the stack is built up of transmission media, a metro layer or an MPLS layer, an IP layer of routers that create a wide area network, and they are using the underlying layers to create that network. Then you may have border protection services like firewalls and so on at the different sites. Then you may have sites with local area networks. And then in those like networks, networks, you would have workstations. And on the workstations, you have an operating system, you have applications, and you have all kinds of profiling on these workstations. At the same time, you would have your data center with your bare metal, your hypervisors, uh, your operating systems, your store and compute capabilities, your VM instances, and your virtual switching and you name it, uh, that's all part of your data center. Now, a service, if a customer comes along and he wants to have a service, uh, it will require assets and resources and configurations, especially within each of these layers that we just talked about in the stack. And today, a service order is coming in to an organization and it goes to individual people. There is the router guy, there's the transmission guy, there is the IT guy, there's the domain controller guy, there's the data center guy, there's the virtualization guy, you know, all different people. And they all have to go through a big process in creating that service end-to-end -end for that one specific customer. That takes a lot and a lot of time and it's error prone. That is where SDN will come in the picture. So now let's look on how that provisioning would happen in an SDN world. Well, first of all, you would have an orchestration tool or an orchestrator. And that's a function that knows exactly all the capabilities of all the equipment or all the assets in your stack. It knows about all the routers and your capabilities. It knows about all the firewalls. It knows about the data center, store, and compute uh, capabilities. It knows all of that. And it, it's kept in a big database. So if a customer comes along and he subscribes to a service, a service which is kind of predefined in your orchestration tool, then it will generate configurations for all the elements in the stack and it will push down those configurations to make it happen. So now let's take a very simple example. Uh, you have a new customer and he wants to have a new workstation at the remote site and he wants to have a private network all the way back to another private client which is sitting uh, somewhere else across the network. 
the orchestration system will then generate all the configurations. So the workstation will be provisioned, it will have an image uh, being pushed onto it, the user will get an account, it will be the user will have an Active Directory account, for instance, to authenticate. The workstation will have to be connected to the LAN, so the LAN switches will be configured so that that customer is able to connect to a very specific port on the LAN switches and maybe in the LAN we need to create a VLAN for that specific purpose and then the VLAN has been pushed down to all the LAN switches in the LAN and remember the LAN is multiple switches and then the firewall has to be opened up with certain policy for that very specific VPN then the PKI system comes into play as well to create the keys and the certificates for the VPN to be established then lower down, the routers may actually be required to be created uh, with a VRF, a virtual routing function for that very specific customer. So he has its own private VPN across the, even the wide area network. And of course, on that VRF, on the router, you may have to create very specific quality of service parameters because this gentleman uh, may require a low latency, high throughput, jitterless, and very trustful connection. So therefore, you would have to implement quality of service, set the queues, and all these aspects, allocate bandwidth and so on uh, at the IP level. Underneath the IP level, you may even actually have to configure label switching paths if you're using an MPLS network, or if you're running in a metro environment, you may have to create either virtual connections or VPLS connections or whatever sort. And at the very bottom, you may even have to install new transmission media or configure new ports on transmission media uh, like the WDM and, and fiber connections and you name it. So all this activity has to happen to create that end-to-end -end service for that one customer. And that is happening through the orchestration tool which is aware of all the capabilities and it's pushing down all the configurations to all these devices. And therefore service fulfillment or provisioning is very, very fast. And it's not only provisioning. Imagine that this customer now wants to go and have a change. He wants more bandwidth. That's possible. And instead of all these individual people in the old legacy systems to start manipulating the bandwidth, both on the QS level and both on the VRF level and both on the LSP levels, now, uh, the orchestration, orchestration system can just go down and push down the chains very rapidly and very quickly. And in fact, you need very little intervene, intervention by humans. If you have a self-serving portal, which is another type of SDN implementation, then the customer can go to the self-serving portal. If he stays within his SLA, then he can tick off different bandwidths, for instance, or different destinations, or all different little features for which he has paid for before and he wants to activate as his own will. And that will drive then the orchestration tool to modify all the layers in the stack to make it happen. So this is really all about orchestration. So we talked about the orchestration, we've talked a bit about the self-serving portal, so now let's talk about the SDN controller. And I will focus down on a routed network uh, because that's quite simple to explain. If you have a router, you have basically three main functions. A forwarding function, a control function, and a management function. They often call them the forwarding plane, the control plane, and the management plane. The forwarding plane is responsible for forwarding IP packets from one port to another port on the router and then treat it accordingly to the QoS or the quality of service settings that this packet needs to be treated. The control plane is all about routing, it's all about policy, it's all about calculating routing tables and making sure that the network is converged and that the network knows all the subnets that are attached to the network. And therefore, you have routing protocols like OSPF and BGP and RIP and ISIS and so on. And the routers are very busy, but very busy with computing the routing tables, which they explore through the routing protocols and which they announce through the routing protocols. Okay, so that's the uh, control plane. 
And then the management plane is how you manage the device, like SNMP, uh, things like that. Okay, so the idea of SDN is that you take out the control plane out of the router. Take that function away from him and do that in a centralized controller. That's why we call it the SDN controller. The SDN controller will communicate with all your routers in your network. And every router will know its neighbors. And it will say, my neighbor is up or down. Very simple. And they feed all this information to the SDN controller. And then that SDN controller will see the total network. It can compose it based on the individual information it got from the different routers in the network. If now a packet comes in on one router with a certain destination X, then the first router will look on the destination IP address and it will then look up in a kind of a forwarding table, where do I need to push it to? What interface? So basically the router is only going to take the packet from one interface to the other interface and push it out. That kind of forwarding table, if I may call it that way, is being pushed down by the SDN controller who has calculated the best path from the source to the destination. And for that specific router, it says, it will say, look, if you have an IP packet, that has to go from your place to the far end, you just push it to interface one or to interface two, whatever, whatever the best part was. And that's all what the router has to do, push it to the next interface. And then it gets over the link to the next router, right? And the next router gets the packet in as well. And the same thing happens. It will look it up, what is my next interface to push it out? And it just pushes it out. The tables, of the next interface are all being pushed down by the ISDN controller. Now, isn't that neat? That's very, very, very handy. Now, in the beginning, the first packet, they need to learn. So obviously the tables could be empty. And if the tables are empty, then the first packet comes in, the router doesn't know what to do with it. And then it will go up to the ISDN controller and say, hey, ISDN controller, uh, give me uh, my outgoing interface for this packet, please. And then the ISDN controller, which has it all calculated anyway, will push it back down. So this is a bit on how the SDN controller is generically working. There's many, many different protocols uh, to do that. <clears throat> now, there's another big advantage of an SDN controller. Because in traditional IP networks, we just forward packages hop by hop. And Nobody has a total view on the network. Right? They all have a routing table, the routers, but nobody has a total view. And if a router downstream drops out, then it takes forever um, for the, all the other routers to find out what has happened. And that interface is down, or that serial link is down, or whatever. And that is the convergence time. And you may say it's not big, but it is big. It could be seconds, and it could be even milliseconds, like in an MPLS world, it's 50 milliseconds, but nevertheless, uh, it is sometimes big, and time can mean a lot for certain applications. Uh, an airline or a jet can fly quite some distance in, in, in three, four seconds or 20 seconds. So, it, all depending on the application, you may have an issue. So, convergence is very critical. Um, the other thing is that routing through a, an IP network, as we know it today, uh, it, it it is based on metrics, right? It's typically based on bandwidth. The, the links with most bandwidth will carry most of the traffic and will always be used. And you have a lot of links that will not be used. Yes, I know MPLS TE uh, is a bit different, but then it's you who designs the traffic engineering. And that's also a very intense job uh, to do and to maintain and to keep the scalability of it. Now, in the SDN world, uh, you could implement telemetry meaning that every router will measure per link basis, a one-to-one -one basis. It will measure the delay and it will give you the loading on it and it will provide the jitter and the packet drop. And it can feed all these parameters up to the SDN controller. And that SDN controller can then actually calculate the best possible paths for delay, for throughput, for jitter, whatever, throughout the whole network because it has a constant updated 
view of the network. And that is why if a packet comes in, which is requiring low latency through the network, you may actually push it through lower, uh, through lower bandwidth links, which you couldn't do before. So it's the ISDN controller that now will condition the network for that one specific flow to flow over a very specific path, which is then dynamically adjusted while the network conditions are changing. Now, that is a very, very big advantage of SDN. And the same philosophy is applicable to the data center, it's applicable to applications, it's applicable to the network, it's applicable to all the layers in the stack because they all can be controlled by an SDN controller. Of course, the parameters will be different, but this is how it goes. Um, so in essence, SDN is all about service fulfillment, fully automated, and then really having the service assurance by dynamically automated use of all your network resources and assets in the most optimum way through means of centralized control and telemetry uh, feeding back in. Now, a lot of people will say, yeah, I don't want a centralized controller because if that goes down, then everything stops. Well, yes, you're right. But there are, however, many implementations of SDN that have distributed SDN controllers. And one example of a very, very nice SDN implementation in the WAN is what we call segment routing. It is also an SDN implementation, but a bit different than other SDN implementations. But I'll talk about that at the later states. So I hope that I was able to bring across the values of SDN. Thank you for viewing.